my circuits are abuzz with anticipation of what your next task will be for me that does not involve ending the life of an organic meat bag that deserves death. It's a battle of the killer droids as HK-47 takes on Mr. Bones in today's episode of Star Wars Versus. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Versus. We have two droids going head to head today as HK-47 from Knights of the Old Republic takes on Mr. Bones from the Aftermath trilogy. For those who aren't familiar with Mr. Bones, he's basically the modern Star Wars canon version of HK-47, which is why this matchup is interesting. He loves killing, he's very, very funny, he's loyal to his master, and on one occasion he even calls someone a meat bag. So in this matchup, these two droids will be fighting to the death. I'm going to do two rounds of analysis before doing the actual battle. In the first round, we'll look at the physical attributes of the droids. In the second round, we'll look at the programming. And then finally, we'll do the actual matchup itself. Let's now examine the physical attributes of these two droids, and we'll start with HK-47. HK-7 existed in Star Wars Legends thousands of years before the Battle of Yavin. He was built and programmed by the Sith Lord Darth Revan, and although because of the time difference you would assume that there was a technological disparity between him and Mr. Bones, it seems like droid technology hasn't advanced considerably within the Star Wars universe. HK-47 was based off the Zerka HK-24 model, so I think it's safe to assume that they shared many common similarities, including probably most notably Durasteel armor. And on that note, HK-47 clearly is much more larger and more bulky than the standard B1 battle droid of which Mr. Bones is based off of. HK-47 was created to serve as an assassin, and his equipment reflects that specialization. Without straying too far into looking at his programming, he was adept at killing from both up close and from far away, and could make use of either rifles or handheld weapons. That being said, I think it's fair to say that HK-47 preferred to use blaster rifles and most commonly, that he would use some form of sniper rifle. So for this matchup, I'll give HK-47 on defense his standard Durasteel armor, and on offense he will be armed with a standard Droid Assassin sniper rifle. In reality, HK-47 would have been armed with grenades and secondary weapons which would have been configured depending on his mission type. However, in these missions I always assume that the combatants are unprepared, so no secondary weapons for him here. Looking now at Mr. Bones, it's quite clear that this droid's effectiveness comes not from his physical attributes, but from his programming. The basis for Mr. Bones is a simple B1 battle droid, however that basis has been modified fairly extensively. All points on Mr. Bones' body, from his beak to his fingernails, have been sharpened so they can be used as knives. He also has very sharp, very deadly retractable blades within his arms, which he can flick out at a moment's notice. Despite having the standard base of a B1 battle droid, Mr. Bones was incredibly fast and very agile. He would routinely jump up in the air and do flips, contort his body in weird ways, and was shown to be very flexible, largely due to extra joints that were added into his body. Mr. Bones' body reflects his programming, which is a mix between General Grievous, various dancers, and martial artists. He is able to move with incredible grace and precision. Mr. Bones is also able to self-repair, however this process takes a while and in the heat of battle will not likely be very useful. Bones' other modifications including a new paint scheme and the attachment of animal bones to his body will similarly not be very useful within this battle. Mr. Bones was also at times armed with a blaster rifle, however he was much more proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I can't think back to too many instances within the Aftermath trilogy where he actually blasted someone. To sum up this section, I think it's clear to say that both of these droids have a build that reflects their programming. Mr. Bones is not as durable given that he's based on a B1 battle droid, but is very very fast. HK-47 on the other hand has decent armor and prefers to use long range weapons. Let's now look at programming and we'll start with Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones was based off a B1 battle droid but was modified heavily by Temin Wexley. In trying to make a more efficient droid, Temin uploaded the personalities of various dancers, martial artists, and even some personality of General Grievous himself. This made Bones many many more times more deadly than the standard B1 battle droid. It also did make him fairly strange. He was very sadistic and violent, and he loved his owner in a way not ordinarily seen with droids. However, going back to the deadliness of his personality, because of his quickness and his agility, he's able to at times take on dozens of combatants without being damaged. 
The combination of a warrior and a dancer gives him not only a lot of flourish, but makes him very difficult to hit. HK-47, as I mentioned, was not only created, but also programmed by Darth Revan himself. He operated in an assassin's role and was especially good at taking down Jedi. There's not really a whole lot else to say about HK-47 other than that he was an incredible marksman, very competent when it came to assassinations, and, like Mr. Bones, had quite a bit of sadism and violence within him. With that being said, let's now look at the actual matchup, and I think it's clear that HK-47 has a distinct advantage over Mr. Bones. First of all, he has cohesive programming. Everything about his personality was created by a single person, and not only any person, but the Sith Lord Darth Revan. On the other hand, Mr. Bones was basically created out of anything that 14-year-old Temin Wexley could get his hands on. And to me, it's just obvious why a droid created by a mechanically inclined Sith Lord with basically every resource at his disposal would be more effective than one hobbled together by a teenager. However, even if their programming was equal, which they might be, HK-47 has a distinct advantage within his specialization. HK is used to fighting Jedi, and Jedi are very fast, very agile targets who, in a way, match very closely the fighting style of Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones prefers to get up close and personal, he likes to use his blades, he's very fast, and he often jumps and does somersaults. These are the exact same things you'd see with a Jedi. HK-47 is also much, much more proficient at range, so as long as he can keep Mr. Bones from closing the gap, he should be able to take him out. Much of Mr. Bones' effectiveness also relies on the fact that, as a B-1 battle droid, he's always underestimated, particularly by Imperials. I don't think HK-47 is the same way. He sees everything as a target and will not hesitate to finish Bones with cool efficiency. Finally, HK-47 also has fairly thick plating and armor. The blades used by Mr. Bones are much more effective against squishy organics than hard droids. So even if Mr. Bones does get close, his blades won't be effective against the limbs of HK-47 as they would with, say, a Stormtrooper. He will thus have to resort to using a blaster, and that's an area in which he is totally outclassed by HK-47, a dedicated assassin droid. All in all, I give this battle to HK-47, and I say he wins 8.5 times out of 10. The only chance I'm giving Mr. Bones is if technology has really improved in 4,000 years to such a degree that he just has a natural advantage over the older droid. There's also the fact that HK-47 does seem to be relatively slow, while Mr. Bones is very fast. Perhaps he can use that to his advantage. However, I still think, as I said eight and a half times, this battle goes to the Old Republic's HK-47. But let me know what you guys think. That is just, of course, one man's opinion. How do you think this matchup would go? Would Mr. Bones take it? Would HK-47 take it? And also tell me which droid you like overall, and which one you'd rather have as a companion. Also, don't forget to let me know down in the comments any idea you have for future episodes. If you enjoyed the content today, make sure to follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, and follow me on Twitch, where I'll be streaming a ton of Star Wars Battlefront today. Links for all of those things down in the description. Anyway, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, may the Force be with you.